through eight lists. Prophecy. Serving. Let's, let's go to the next slide. Prophecy. Serving. Teaching. Exhortation. Giving. Leading. And showing mercy. If you're one of those people that, you know, your gift is uh, offending people, uh, you'll notice it's not on the list. You might want to have the church pray for showing mercy. Uh, sometimes we need a little more of that. So that comes from Romans 12. I want you to know where all these things come from. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12. There it again, prophets, apostles, evangelists. There's one we haven't seen yet. Someone who has a supernatural ability to share the gospel doesn't excuse the rest of us, including me, who do not have a supernatural ability to share the gospel. I don't. My knee's not just like yours. I don't know why. I've said it a million times before, and I've seen God save people, and yet for some reason, I bet, you know, I... Man, you go walk around with Eric Fuller, you're going to get to get to see somebody that is a gifted evangelist. The shepherd, that's the word that you, we get the word pastor from. And so we can say, well, we have a, a, you know, our senior pastor, and we have our family pastor, we have our worship pastor. It would be entirely accurate to say that we're shepherding a group of people involved in the ministry area and all of that. But I know that in this room, all over the place, there are those who are taking care of a little flock in a department or in a class. They watch over and they encourage and they direct and they challenge. That's shepherding, uh, teaching. And so what is the purpose? So I can get a lot of attention and pat myself on the back. No, verse 12. All of these things are happening to equip the saints for the work of ministry. That means that the saints do what? Saints for the work of ministry. No, that's what we pay the staff for. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe there's not much ministry going on because the staff can only do so much. But if everybody in this room that's a born-again child of God saw themselves in ministry and serving God in this way, not in their flesh, but in the power of the Holy Spirit, imagine how much more would be done in terms of ministry for building up the body of Christ. For helping each other grow is the idea. Now, if you look at that list, apostleship, prophecy, evangelism, pastor, teacher, that's the Ephesians 4.11 list. The question we would ask ourselves next is what does this... Yeah, go ahead and what does this piece of paper have a chance of doing? <laughs> Helping us really. Now just the 411 list here. Uh, that's going to help us figure this out. Okay, so you can look at it now. Pick it up from your desk, turn it over. Take your number two pencil and put it in your purse. You don't need it yet. You see that? It's one through eighty questions. Now I want to tell you the truth, folks. I hope you're listening right now, because I could be lost in sin. I could be Adolf Hitler and sit down and take this test and supposedly come up with spiritual gifts, right? Because all I have to do is answer these questions. I'm going to be answering them in the flesh. I'm dead in trespasses and sins. I don't belong to God, but I could go through here and mark my preferences of these things and add up scores and say, you know, that uh, even though I'm an axe murderer, I'm really high in, uh, in uh, prophecy. <laughs> so what am I saying? If you're not giving your heart and life to Jesus, the Spirit of God doesn't live within you. You're not going to find any truth by taking this test until you have Christ and the Spirit of God lives within you. Now, what would be the next thing that we want to say? I'm here and I'm looking through this test and I'm trying to decide all these things about giftedness. 
and by the way, I'm cheating on my wife, I lied about my income taxes, and I've stolen about $4,000 of stuff from work. So you think I'm going to get a really good idea here of what my spiritual giftedness is today? If the Spirit of God gives me the giftedness, and the Spirit of God is going to reveal to me what that giftedness is, not for my own purposes, but for His, and I'm ignoring Him, I'm grieving Him, I am quenching Him, you think He's going to? No, no, no. And so we have to get to the place where before we run through this paper thinking we're going to find something extraordinary, we sat down with the Lord and said, Lord, I'm not trying to find these out so I can go over and tell everybody what my difference is. I, I want to find out how it is that you prepared me to serve. Now let me, let me grab this one last thing here. This is going to be the biggest part, okay? So I hope you're listening. Why would he tell you If when he tells you, your answer is no. Does he already know how you're going to respond? Yeah. He does. In other words, if he was going to, those of you are experiencing God, you're listening now, right? If God is going to invite you to join him in what he is doing, Work with the Spirit of God in the world. He's going to invite you to join Him in what He's doing. When He invites you to join Him, more often than not, there's going to come a what? A crisis of belief. And when that crisis of belief comes, what we do or say next shows what we believe about God. So if I tell God, oh no, God, I can't do that. Remember when Moses said, oh no, you need to get somebody else to do the talking because I can't speak? What did God say to Moses? Moses, who gave you your mouth? Who made it? I made it. I know what your mouth can do. I can do through your life what I need to do. I don't need you to do it. I need for you to be a vessel to let me do it through you. And so if I go through here and I, and I see, well, you know, yeah, I see this, I see this. But God, you know, I have a sense that maybe you're calling me to, to develop the gift of teaching. And that terrifies me. No, I can't do that. Why would God even reveal it to you if the answer is going to be no? Except for you to know that you're not in proper fellowship with him. Because folks, I want to tell you this, this is something I've learned the hard way all of my life. There's a sentence, it's only got two words in it, and it just doesn't work. And the sentence is, no, Lord. Because if he's the Lord, can I say no? I don't have the right to say no. He's the Lord, he made me, he made me for his purposes. I exist for him. I don't exist for me. Yeah. Everything that I have and everything that I know and everything that I'm going to be is wrapped up in the reality of who Jesus is. And so, as you look at this, make sure that what, what you're saying in your heart and your mind is, is the Lord, whatever you show me, the answer is yes. And, and I don't know how to start doing whatever it is you may be leading me toward, but I'm just going to make myself available. I'm going to go tell the pastor. I'm going to tell my Sunday school teacher. I'm going to go talk to that deacon friend. I'm going to get with a mature Christian and say, how do, if God is leading me in this way, how do I get started? So, as you look at those questions, there they are. You go through the, the 80 questions, and then you score your survey on the back right there. You move the score from the that right under number 80. Once you filled it in there, you move it over to the graphing your profile. And you'll have some numbers. Look at the, the graphing your profile. 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So where you have a leadership score, 
and it's up here at 15, you put a dot, maybe it's 18, you go between 15 and 20, you put the dot, you move over, you put all of your scores. You'll see the higher ones, you'll see the lower ones, just in terms of what the survey shows that God uh, is showing you through this marker. After you finish that, you'll look, it says, now that you've completed the survey thoughtfully, answer the following questions. The gifts I have begun to discover in my life are, and they give you three blanks. Maybe it's more than three. Maybe it's only one. Then notice what it says. After prayer and worship, I am beginning to sense that God wants me to use my spiritual gifts to serve the body of Christ by, and this may take some time, I'm not sure yet how God wants me to use my gifts to serve others, but I am committed to prayer and worship, seeking wisdom and opportunities to use the gift that I have received from God. Ask God to help you know how He has gifted you for service and how you can begin to use this gift in ministry with others. Now, if you are a new Christian, don't get hung up here. Give God a chance to show you some things. If you've been a Christian for a long, long time and you've never operated in anything you've understood as spiritual giftedness, don't be surprised if you begin to find out when you talk to some of the people around you, right? People in your Sunday school class, you're going, I don't, I don't know what my spiritual gift is are. And they look at you and they say, what? You don't know what your spiritual gift is? Well, we all know what your spiritual gift is. And folks, that will happen to you. There will be some group of people that are around your life all the time. And they'll say, you have the gift of administration because you keep us ducks in a row for everything. And you've got us going 50 directions and just exactly what we're supposed to do. It's a good thing you asked us. And you don't see it, but we do. We see the gift of helps in your life. We see that God has raised you up as a biblical teacher. We see that you shepherd the people around you. We see. And so sometimes you have to talk to a, a saved spouse. Talk to people in your class. And ask them those questions. You know, what do you see about me in this uh, uh, I have the ability to make critical decisions when necessary. I'm sensitive to the hurts of people. Help me go through this and tell me what you see. Now, if you ask somebody to do it with you, don't get mad if they do. You say, oh yes, I make wonderful critical decisions right at the right time. And then you go, <laughs> You gotta let God, who's gonna help us? Experience of God class, we're going to learn things from the Spirit of God going to lead us through Scripture and how else? I'm sorry? Circumstances through the church? Okay, I, I hear y'all mumbling out there. God uses a lot of different ways to show us how He's at work, but everything has to match the Word of God. It doesn't matter if somebody comes to you and they say, God told me to tell you this. If it doesn't match the scripture, you just say, well, I'll wait until God tells me. You have a nice day. Okay. Now, I'm sending you home with this. But you need to bring it back next week. Please. So, put it in whatever is coming back with you next week. Guys, look at it and then stick it in your wife's purse. And pray that she doesn't change purses this week. Because that could happen. Alright. The last thing before we go. We can talk about spiritual giftedness all day long. But there's a more important gift. And we find that in John chapter 1. You're looking at that passage. <coughs> Until you have Jesus. This is all a waste of time. Yeah. You, you might as well have stayed home today and trimmed your tongue in. I'm serious. 
If you don't have Jesus in your heart and life, if you're not a born again child of God, all of this is not going to do you any good. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. They were not born, not of physical blood, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of, will of man, but of the will of God. That's how you're going to be saved. God is going to draw you. You're going to know you're a sinner like everybody else in this place. And you're going to say, yes, Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for me. Thank you. Please come into my heart and my life and change me, save me, make me a child of God. And you will. John 3, 16. Do you all know how that goes? Let's hear it. For God loved us all so much. He gave His Son. He's giving His Son to you. Are you receiving today? If you've already received Him, you only have to do that once. If you've never received Him to be the Lord of your life and to save you, today can be the day of your salvation if God is strong. I'm going to pray with you all. We're going to pray a prayer that a person could pray to be saved. There's not any magic words in my prayer. This is something that's between your heart and God. You say, well, I've never prayed before. All you do is think toward God. He can figure it out. He's pretty smart. And as you sense that urgency in your heart, and you express that concern to God, He will hear you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the reality of your Spirit's work in our life. And for those right now who are experiencing the Spirit's work in their life to draw them to salvation. Right now, as they turn their thoughts toward you, they would say, Dear Jesus, 